Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, uh, if you've been with us uh, all week, then you probably have the following words memorized. We're close to that. From Matthew 25, this is Jesus describing Judgment Day. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king replied, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Did for the least of these. Many of you here may know Matthew. Matthew Van Erden. Matthew, is Matthew here? I don't know if Matthew's here. But Matthew Van Erden came to Concordia in the fall of 2016. And I was privileged to have him in my LA 105 class. If you know Matthew as I know Matthew, you know that he loves his sleep, he loves to eat, he loves his friends, and he loves baseball. Every class, it was inevitable that our conversations would turn to baseball. And for those of you that know me, well, let's just say the love for the game was mutual. And it wasn't difficult for me to soon realize that Matthew and I were kindred spirits. During Matthew's first year here, he would regularly ask me, and I know he was up in Coach Morgan's office a lot, he would always ask, Kuiper, winter tryouts. He wanted to be part of the team. He talked to the players about it. He longed to be a baseball player. So one day, last fall, unbeknownst to us, the coaching staff, infielder Parker Rome and the rest of the baseball team took the matter into their own hands in an impromptu service event. What I'm about to show you is a video clip that Matthew first shared with me in the cafeteria shortly after. He was beaming ear to ear about his tryout. All the way! Keep going! Go two, go two! those things happen for him during those moments. But as I rewatched the video, I noticed something else. I want you to watch the video again. But this time, don't focus on Matthew. I want you to notice the players and those people 
around him. All the way! Keep going! Go two, go two! Every player there that day provided a service, a great service to Matthew, meeting his needs. But there's also a part of me that believes mutual service occurred that day as well. That maybe it was Matt who, through his love for baseball, provided service in return. Those players were touched by Matthew. They were smiling, and how could their hearts not have been warmed by their experience with him. So I went back and I re-examined those words from the Gospel of Matthew. Maybe serving the least of these means more than helping those less fortunate than me. Maybe, just maybe, Jesus is including me when he talks of least. Matthew 25, verse 40, and it's interesting that this is from the book of Matthew, says that whenever you did this, did, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And I look back into the Greek word least, it refers to size or dignity. It doesn't single out the lame or people with Down syndrome or people on the autism spectrum or any, any other disability. The jump from Jesus' words did for the least of these is easy to connect with service to others. And that's been our focus in chapel this week. And here at Concordia, we are challenged on a regular basis to be of service to others. Volunteer club, best buddies, feeding America. So daily, the university's partnership with Bethesda provides us with opportunities to be of service to those different than ourselves. But again, who is Jesus talking about when he mentions the least? Seeing the video clip again and again, I think, wiped some of the film away from my eyes. When God sent his son, Jesus, to pay the price for all our sins, he sent him to save the least of us. Those people living in a sinful state. And those people are you and me. Jesus died on that cross to save all of his unique creations. And that's how much he loves us all. And while our service to, to people like Matthew and Julianne and Kate and Dakota and Gabby and Caroline and Liam and all the Bethesda students is great, I want you to consider their service to us. When Julianne sits in class and shares with others, when Gabby and Caroline and Dakota come around with a food cart in the afternoon, when Katerina sees me in the BBC in the library and says, hey, Kuiper, she is serving me. And how many of you have ever been blessed to talk with a young man named Christian? Thank you, Bethesda, for your daily service to us. Thank you, Jesus, for loving all of us least so much that you paid the ultimate price and lay down your life. 
I guess what I'm saying is this. Children of God come in all different shapes, sizes, ages, ethnicities, and abilities. And I believe that all of us here are unique children of God. Students, be blessed by the opportunities you have to touch and to be touched by God's unique creations. Staff, be blessed by the opportunities you have to touch and to be touched by God's unique creations. And faculty, be blessed by the opportunities you have to touch and to be touched by God's unique creations. Do for the least of these? Yes, all of God's least.